Hi, Camille in the studio, Birds here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about what I have learned making platform V fold books. And um, this is a new book in my shop. It's called Float Repose, and it uses that concept of a platform book. So you can see that there's image on the base level as well as image on the platforms with the fish and the turtle as well as the image on the top part. So just thought I'd share a little bit about what I learned making this. It was a very steep learning curve so I thought maybe this would help other people creating their own platform books. So um, to start out with uh, the first thing that I would recommend in making these V-form platform books is that you make a little mock-up. Um, a mock-up really helps. You're going to be creating the movement. It's going to initiate from the spine of the book. And I decided to create my platform, it's kind of small, um, with a 30 degree angle. So you want to create those angles right here. Uh, with the fold being the center of those angles. And when you have a little mock-up, I just created this with some scrap paper as you can see, um, you can kind of figure some things out. One of the things I learned is your platforms have to be far enough away so that they don't overlap and the distance of the platform kind of um, tells you how much movement you're going to get. So. Um, if they're too close together, they're going to overlap and you're not going to get much movement out of it. Um, the other thing that I learned is the points where your angles are pointing um, dictates the opposite direction of where your movement will be. So if your platforms are pointed this direction, your movement's going to be this direction when you open it up and vice versa. So that was a good thing to learn. Um, and then the last thing that I learned is the tabs that you glue down to uh, the base piece of paper. They need to have enough distance between each of them so that when the tabs are on the inside, they don't overlap. So by creating a mock-up, you can kind of see um, how your tabs are going to interact with each other, especially those that are folding in on the angles. So that's what I would suggest starting out is to create a mock-up. Um, the second thing that um, I learned really adds a lot of dynamics to the movement of the pop-up is the platform heights. And I found that if I created a two platforms that were exactly the same height that it wasn't quite as smooth as if I created one of the platforms just a slight bit lower. Um, so I would suggest that instead of two platforms that are exactly the same height. But you can also play around with the idea that the movement that you're creating can also be accentuated by the height of the platform. So you can make a platform quite a bit higher than the other. So not only will the movement be coming towards you, but it would also be rising and vice versa. You can also have that movement um, come away from you depending on your uh, angles um, and have it go down. So those are interesting things to consider as you're creating your mock-up. And the last thing to think about when you are creating a platform pop-up book is the gluing. And the gluing is just really essential. And the major thing that you need to remember um, is to glue things in with the book closed. That's the big secret. You want to have the book closed and then glue something in. So um, I like to create uh, a good marking system on the page. So I have the angles here, my 30 degree angle for my platform. I have the top of the book. Um, I also have whether the folds on my platforms are going to be a valley fold or a mountain fold. And that just means a valley fold would mean the image is down in the valley or a mountain fold and the image would be on the outside of that mountain. So to start out, um, you cut out your platforms and you want to glue them onto your base sheet 
and to do that you you glue them onto the marked area and then you fold the book down and press that and when you open it back up you want to apply glue to these two tabs that will be remaining and then press the book closed and that is how you glue everything so you glue one side and then you let that set I usually put it under uh, a weight or something and then you open it back out and you put glue on the opposite side either top or bottom depending on what you're gluing uh, fold that back down and press that to glue the second side that makes sure that your book can open and close once you have everything glued. Uh, it's a little bit trickier to glue the top piece. You're going to do it the same way though. You will um, dry fit it first to make sure that the piece isn't hanging out here uh, when it's closed or hanging out here when it's closed. Um, I dry fit it. I fold the piece. Uh, I know that I glue mine about right here where the head is on the platform for the figure. So. Um, then I add the glue to the upper flaps. I snug this piece in. I want to get it all the way to the corners of the platforms, the inside of the groove of the angle. I snug that in and then just slowly close that, making sure the tabs are nicely touching the piece. And then let that dry and then I open it back up. And that's when I will glue the second side. Glue it in two stages. Glue one side, press it, let it sit, open it up. Glue the other side, press it, close it, and let it sit. So that would be my advice to you for putting together your own platform books. Um, hope you learned something and that I could share something with you here. Uh, hopefully this will, will be a good week for you to make something creative. Uh, if you'd like to see this book in my shop or check out some of my do-it-yourself kits to make your own artist books, check out under my name, Camille Reiner, in my Etsy store. Thanks for watching.